Alright guys, what is up? Today I'll jump straight into it and I'll try to keep it as short as possible but I can't promise anything. So today we are looking at what you can do to improve your computer's performance, make it run cooler and by doing so prolong its life. No matter if you have a laptop or a desktop, there are a few things you should bear in mind which are universally true for both of them. The first thing you should keep in mind is to keep your computer clean. And by this I don't mean clean your keyboard every now and then, although you should, but Keep in mind that dust will get inside your computer and will settle on the fans and all your components. And this in turn will make them and the cooling of your machine less effective, they will run hotter and they probably won't last as long. Now let's say you've got this beast of a machine with a powerful processor and graphics cards. You will need to pick a proper cooling solution for your system in order to achieve high performance. This is a problem which on laptops is a lot worse especially in recent years because manufacturers have started cramming in these very powerful components in increasingly smaller and thinner form factors. And by doing so, you're almost certain to get a toasty laptop under full load, which won't perform nearly as good as, in, as it should in theory, because the computer will limit itself in order to, well, not catch fire. So for laptops, what you can do is really, really look into it before buying the model you'd like. Look up videos, reviews, articles, because there are some that are very poorly designed and that can't physically handle all the heat generated by the system. And also keep in mind that a laptop which, for example, has a top-of-the-line and very expensive Intel i9-9900K processor but can't keep it cool will perform actually worse than a cheaper i7 but with decent thermals. Specs aren't everything. On the desktop side, there's a lot more you can do, fortunately. Make sure you have enough air ventilation inside the case with case fans, first of all. And then the choosing of the CPU cooler itself should be, of course, based on your type of use of the computer and the CPU's performance. You'll find on every processor a TDP value measured in watts. Uh, based on this, you can determine what kind of cooler you need. I personally have a cooler from Be Quiet, the Dark Rock 3, which consists, of course, of a big radiator with a fan on it to cool down the processor, and I'm very happy with it, as you almost can't hear it and the temperatures are really good. There are many different options, water cooling, which is quite complicated and mostly for tech enthusiasts, is another. And there is also a simpler way to water cool with AIOs or all-in-ones coolers. This is essentially water cooling in a closed loop. You don't need to do anything, you just mount the radiator and the fans on your case, then mount the CPU cooler which is connected to the radiators through a closed loop system of pipes with, with water circulating between them. Number three is changing the thermal paste between the radiator and your CPU. And if you are even a bit of a nerd and like toying around with tech stuff, you might really enjoy this step actually. It's pretty straightforward, but damage can occur if you are completely reckless, so be careful. What you need to do is remove the CPU cooler, you will probably find residue of the old thermal compound, which you need to clean, ideally with a clean cloth and isopropyl alcohol, from both the CPU and the radiator. Then you will need to apply the new thermal compound, I can personally recommend the Arctic Silver 2, but there are many other options out there. How you apply it also has an impact. You will probably find instructions from the manufacturer, but if not, I can just say that applying too much of it can be as bad as not applying any. The perfect amount, I'd say, is a bit bigger than a grain of rice right in the middle of the processor. The fourth thing you can do is undervolting your CPU. Now again, this is maybe too much of a headache for most people, but it's a completely safe and simple process if done properly. Why would you want to undervolt your CPU, you might ask? Well, because you will get better thermals and better performance even. By keeping your CPU cooler under load, the system won't limit itself and will perform better. For this, the easiest option would be to download and use Intel's XT free program, which will work with locked processors too, even if the program will prompt you that your system is not compatible for overclocking, which in fact isn't what we're doing here. Just go to advanced tuning, core and core voltage offset, and set it to minus 0.100 volts. This will probably be safe and stable for all systems, but just to be sure, run a stress test for half an hour, and the worst that can happen is you get a blue screen. Then you can tinker and adjust accordingly. Now, the only drawback to this is that Intel XTU needs to be running for your settings to apply. That was about it for this video, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed it, and if so, like it and tell me in the comments below if you found it even remotely too useful. Till next time, thanks for watching.